Hi, my name's Martin and I'm an alcoholic. Welcome to Get Sober with Martin. In this series, every Saturday I will read and discuss a chapter from a book called Living Sober. And it's a, it's a book by uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, conference approved literature. Um, and it, it gives little tips on what you can do during times which are challenging throughout your sobriety. It does not detail the program of action which helps us to get sober and stay sober. Those are outlined in the book Alcoholics Anonymous and this, the steps that uh, lie within there, the 12 steps are expanded upon in the book, 12 steps and 12 traditions. So if you're curious about getting sober um, or you are sober and you're you're finding it really difficult and you haven't gone through the steps, I would definitely recommend first getting those books and, and using this booklet, Living Sober, as perhaps an, some, an, addition, an addition to those two books. Um, and we will, we will be reading, all the videos will be, will be posted onto YouTube every Saturday and you can check them out in any order you wish. So this channel basically what I do it's not for profit motive, it's not for popularity. Uh, it's been taught to me that you know I need to pass on what has been so freely given to me if I am to stay sober. So um, what I'm doing on this channel is sharing the materials and the methods that I used that were passed on to me in order to get and to stay sober. So um, leave a message in the comments. Let us know how long you're sober and what you do on a daily basis to stay sober. And uh, anyone who's watching, you can, you can read those as there are many, many ways. There are many, many methods. And all I can do on this channel is share, share mine, share my part of the journey. I don't speak on behalf of any 12-step fellowship or represent any 12-step fellowship, even though I do attend one um and uh, yeah it's it, it, it's really good to be sober today so what i'll do is i'll start reading living sober chapter three uh, if you want to read along um there is a uh, in the description of this youtube video if you're watching this on youtube um in the description there is a link um to a to a word document which you can read along it's free of charge to check out that we that uh, word document and underneath you will find a kindle link and an I apple itunes um link where you can where you can buy the kindle version or the e the e-reader version for a short for a very small price so chapter three using the 24-hour plan in our drinking days we often had such bad times that we swore never again. We took pledges for as long as a year or promised someone we would not touch the stuff for three weeks or three months. And of course, we tried going on the wagon for various periods of time. And and that was my experience. Um, I, re I remember, you know, when when Facebook came out with the, with the function that you could see your memories, you know, what you posted three years, six years, nine or 12 years ago. And I remember in sobriety, seeing over the course of my first year of sobriety that most of my memories were actually me talking about getting sober or posting about that, you know, I, I can't keep on drinking like this. I'm stopping for good. Uh, I'm doing a month without alcohol. Um, and you know that uh, if, if I was saying that to a bunch of people on a social media platform then obviously that's what I was telling my friends and my loved ones and you know possibly colleagues and partners and uh, and uh, you know trying to do that on my own steam and, and it not working for a long period we were absolutely sincere when we voiced these declarations through gritted teeth with all our hearts, we wanted never to be drunk again. We were determined. We swore off drinking altogether, intending to stay off alcohol well into some indefinite future. And there was times when I was convinced that I was stopped for good because of the shame or the fear or the consequences. And I just didn't want to be doing it anymore. And I tried to stop drinking when I was 18 and spent 13 years unsuccessfully 
trying to stop on my own limited power. And I, I tried many, many different methods and nothing worked. Yet in spite of our intentions, the outcome was always inevitably the same. Eventually the memory of the vows and of the suffering that led to them faded. We drank again and we wound up in more trouble. Our dry forever had not lasted very long. And that was the thing, you know, no matter what would happen, no matter how bad the consequences was, eventually, you know, the harshness of that, the memory of that would fade. And I would find myself justifying having another a drink of alcohol again or minimizing the event that had happened um, you know dismantling basically the barriers I have put between myself and alcohol some of us who took such pledges had a private reservation we told ourselves that the promise not to drink applied only to hard stuff not to beer or wine in that way we learned if we did not already know it that beer or wine could get us drunk too we just had to drink more of them to get the same effect we got on distilled spirits. We wound up as stoned on beer or wine as we had been before on the hard stuff. And I've done that. I got to an age where, you know, the people that I had been drinking with for a long time, they started to stop or moderate. They would have got relationships, careers, kids, different things. And I was still living the life that I was living in my late teens or early twenties. And I knew it had to stop that I wasn't acting appropriately for for a guy my age and um, I decided well maybe I should just drink wine and become a bit of a wine buff and end up going to Bordeaux and checking out the vineyards and traveling the world and being a bit of a connoisseur but the reality was that that wine is just alcohol in, di in disguise it's got a cloak on and I don't drink wine like other people just like I don't drink any other alcohol like most people um, you know I instead instead of drinking a glass of wine and enjoying it I have to drink two bottles and I can kit myself in many ways in trying to justify you know my alcohol intake uh, to myself but at the end of the day I didn't stop until I accepted that I couldn't drink alcohol in any form at all. Yes, others of us gave up alcohol completely and did keep our pledges exactly as promised until the time was up. Then we ended the drought by drinking again and were soon right back in trouble with an additional load of new guilt and remorse. And it doesn't matter how long we stay stuck for. If it's like, you know, we say stay stuck for a month or a year or 20 years, we're still gonna be an alcoholic when we start again. It's a lifelong disease the same as being a diabetic you're never not a diabetic it's the same with alcoholism so the only thing that i know that works is complete abstinence uh, to stop for the rest of our lives with such struggles behind us now in AA we try to avoid the expressions on the wagon and taking the pledge they remind us of our failures although we realize that alcohol is a permanent, irreversible condition. Our experience has taught us to make no long-term promises about staying sober. And it talks here about the permanent, irreversible condition. And uh, you know, you can't turn a pickle back into a cucumber. And uh, once you're an alcoholic, whether you're an alcoholic from when you were born or whether you become an alcoholic, I don't know which one comes first or uh, what the truth is on that one. Um, to be honest, it doesn't bother me. What I what what I try and learn about is what is the solution, you know, what 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 helps me recover, and how can I best apply that to my daily life, and how can I become disciplined in doing so. So those are what I occupy myself with in regards to recovery. We have found it more realistic and more successful to say, I am not taking a drink just for today. And sometimes, you know, when it's early stages in, in, in your journey in recovery, you know, staying sober for the rest of your life can seem like impossible. Staying sober for a year would be like, in, you know, just, it feels like too much, even a couple of months. And sometimes we have to boil it down to the day. I am not going to take a drink between now and when I go to sleep tonight. And I will do whatever it takes not to do that between now and when I get into bed you know I, I will I will go to any lens I will do whatever I have to do 
not to take a drink of alcohol. Even if we drank yesterday, we can plan not to drink today. We may drink tomorrow. Who knows whether we'll even be alive then. But for the, this 24 hours, we decide not to drink. No matter what the temptation or provocation, we determine to go to any extremes necessary to avoid a drink today. And that's the thing, you know, a lot of my relapses, you know, in the 13 years trying to get sober, it was almost like a, the easiest surrender ever at the end. I just gave in. Uh, there w I wasn't going to any extremes necessary to avoid a drink. Um, and there's so many things I can do today um, to avoid a drink if I ever had that feeling again. Um, you know, I can call somebody, you know, I can, you know, who is in recovery. I can go to a 12-step meeting. I can uh, pray. I can try and help another alcoholic, um, which is one of the things that was prescribed to me that helps us recover and so many more tools. Um, but if we're, if we're constantly relapsing um, and we're just trying the same thing over and over again, maybe it's time to do something different. Maybe it's try, time to try somebody else's way to recover. Our families and friends are understandably weary of hearing us vow. This time I really mean it, only to see us lurch home loaded. So we do not promise them or even each other not to drink. Each of us promises only herself or himself. It is after all our own health and life at stake. We, not our family or friends, have to take the necessary steps to stay well. So the way I look at it is a lot of these things in life are temporary. Our jobs can be temporary, our partners can be temporary, our friends can be temporary, but you know, it's us that has to live in our own bodies and us, our own heads until we leave this earth, until we die. So we need to do this for us. We, you know, we, we might come into recovery because, you know, of our kids or the judge sent us or our partner's going to leave us or our boss is going to fire us. But at the end of the day, if we do not do this for us, for our life, for our sanity, for our peace of mind, chances are we won't last too long. And um, we, we really need to want to do this for us, for you. Um, and we need to say, you know, I am worth recovery. I'm worth having this sort of life. I don't need to live like this anymore. If the desire to drink is really strong, many of us chop the 24 hours down into smaller parts. We decide not to drink for, it's, for say, at least one hour. We can endure one temp the temporary discomfort of not drinking for just one more hour then one more, and so on. Many of us begin our recovery in just this way. In fact, every recovery from alcoholism begin with one sober hour. One version of this is simply postponing the next drink. How about it? Are you still sipping soda? Have you really postponed that drink we mentioned back on page one? If so, it can be the beginning of your recovery. The next drink will be available later, but right now we postpone taking it at least for the present day or moment. The 24 hour plan is very flexible. We can start it afresh any time, wherever we are, at home, at work, in a bar or in a hospital room, at 4 p.m. or 3 a.m. We can decide right then not to take a drink during the forthcoming 24 hours or five minutes. Continually renewed, this plan avoids the weakness of such methods as going on the wagon or taking the pledge. A period on the wagon and a pledge both eventually came as planned to an end. So we felt free to drink again, but today is always here. Life is daily. Today is all we have, and anybody can go one day without drinking. First, we try living in the now, just in order to get sober, and it works. Once the idea has become a part of our thinking, we found that living life in 24 hour segments is an effective and satisfying way to handle many other matters as well. And it makes a point here, which took me a while to understand. I spent my life in total remorse about the past or anger or being stuck thinking about what had happened, what could have been different, or I was worrying about the future. And I was never able to be present. I was never able to be here today um, you know, I, I couldn't even be happy. I was thinking, you know, next week when I get that thing, then I'll feel good. Or, or when I get 
this thing or when I buy that thing or when I end up with this person or when I get that job and I was never looking at today and seeing what was in my life today that I'm grateful for and how how things have changed um, what's not in my life today that I'm grateful that isn't and um, I, that recovery has taught me that I need to get into that place otherwise I spend too much time in the past or in the future uh, and having no serenity so so that's this week's reading of the book living sober um, I do release a video every day uh, one minute or less reading the daily reflections it's a short daily reading from AA uh, about a little bit about recovery and if you if you wish to subscribe to that just subscribe to my YouTube channel Get Sober with Martin. The link is in the description also. And hit that bell. Turn on the notification so it'll let you know every day. And it's a short video that can center us throughout the day. I'm, I'm also on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. And the links will be in the description. And let me know what you think of this video. And, um, you know, if it's helped you in any way, just... Give it a like, give it a thumbs up there. And um, that's pretty much all I've got for today. I'll be back next Saturday with a new video. And until then, good luck on your journey and have fun staying sober. There's only one thing we could do whilst we were drinking. There was only one thing in our head. There was only one thing we had to do. Uh, and now there's only one thing we can't do. So go and explore all the rest and enjoy your recovery. Thank you. Bye-bye.